Yeah. Okay. Hello, guys. My name is Alexander Sedler. I'm a classical composer, conductor, but actually I started from rock and roll. My guitar is my first instrument. I also play drums, bass, and the piano. I live in Belgrade, Serbia. I was at my master's studies in LA for two years. Now I'm back since 2013 because I have a wife and a daughter. I live in Belgrade now. I teach in uh, University of in Niche. I teach vocal literature and orchestration, and I also work as a guest conductor in a musical theater, uh, Terazia in, in, in Belgrade. As a performer, I used to record like over, over 50 records, and that's like totally something other than the classical opus but in general that's that, that, that that's what my art field is like the music okay i'll go second what about you osman <laughs> i'll go second uh i'm osman coach i'm a creative technologist slash artist um i used to live in istanbul i just moved to san francisco this year um and yeah and before us Erdem was talking uh and you probably like the audience probably have seen uh, some of the work that I've done with him. Um, so I usually do interactive installations, audiovisual performances. So anything that's like code and electronics related, but for art and design field, that's usually my that's usually my playground. Um, hi, I'm Darko. I uh, am originally from Belgrade, but I live in Berlin. Um, I work as a visual artist, film and performance maker. So my works and projects I do vary depending on um, who I'm collaborating with and what is the interest of the content I'm working on. So um, yeah, that's it. I'm now at my home in Berlin and Osman is in San Francisco and Alexander is in Belgrade. Yeah. Yes. That's super nice. So, should we talk? I, well, last time when we met, we were we had a few subjects that we wanted to talk about. So, I wonder which one should be the first. You, uh, Dark, with your suggestion, like to just to talk about our day, like how does our day look like? I don't know. Should we do it at the beginning or at the end? I'm just wondering let's what would be the best way to start. Yeah, yeah, let's start with our day. Yeah, I agree. I think that would be interesting. Do I have to go first again? Okay, I'm the I'm, 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 if, if I'm the youngest one, I will. <laughs> if I'm not, I won't. Just I kidding. think I'm the youngest. Uh, how old are you? Uh, I'm thirty. Oh yes, okay, you're, you are. I'm thirty-eight. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll I'm go thirty-five. First. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll go. First. <laughs> okay. Uh, so my everyday life is like I'm still um, trying to maintain a freelance life. Um, I have never been employed. I always had this freelance thing going on uh, besides my artistic things and so I usually wake up around like 10 um, just fast breakfast and like I found so in Istanbul I had my own workshop I had my own maker space where I had my tools my machines um, so I had, had a place where I can like experiment or prototype or play with stuff um, luckily, after I moved to San Francisco, I also found a similar place, um, which is called Noisebridge. Noisebridge is like one of the oldest um, hacker spaces in the world. It's like this year we celebrated the 10th year anniversary of it. So I usually go there, um, look through some like what's happening with the world or what's happening with, with my field. Like um, I have a couple of um, websites that I follow constantly. Um, and some, if I have an ongoing project at that time, I start working on that. If not, then I just, uh, if I have an idea uh, that I want to build, I, I start building it. Um, so like one thing that I like about freelance life is that it gives me the, the freedom to take a random Tuesday off and spend it at the park. Um, but at the same time, it is also challenging because I still have to go to a lot of meetings besides writing the code or doing the work itself. Um, so I usually, like, if, if, if I decided that I will work that day, uh, which is almost every day, um, I usually work around until, like, 9, 10 p.m. Um, sometimes it's even later than that. Um, and, yeah. That's usually it. 
Yeah. Nice. Well, my day is, is, I mean, I used to, I used to live a freelance life as well uh, up until some point, until actually I got a job at, at the faculty and, uh, and a theater. But luckily, the job gives me enough enough room to do like all these all these other stuff that 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 I consider to be like my primary kind of thing. Like I don't see myself that much as a professor. It's more like just messing with music and trying to to simply make some new music. So yeah, my my day because I have a I have a little daughter. Her name is Leona. She's three now. So my day usually starts at like, you know, from seven eight, maybe nine or like ten is like super late when you have a kid. And so that's what I have to fit. Like I I tried to, to stay uh, at least to to like give her breakfast and to spend some little time with her. And also I have a training in the middle of the day. So that's like those are two things that are unrelated to music like everything else is is you know trying to to really you know dig into what, what am i doing at the moment and usually i'm doing several projects at a time that are completely different and uh, sometimes that can be messy but luckily i also have my own workspace it's the apartment where i used to live in it's actually where i sit where i sit in now and my studio is, is just in the other room and i I kind of got it to work this summer. I, I I bought some new equipment. I got the 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 real upright piano and stuff like that. So that's like where I spend most of my time, and I'm very lucky to have that space where I can just, you know, isolate myself and focus on what am I supposed to do. So, and I usually it, it depends. Like if if as far as the timing goes, sometimes I try to get home before Leona goes to bed, which is like seven or eight. But usually when I skip that, I stay until like 12 or maybe even one because I don't believe in inspiration that much, but I don't, don't, I don't have that discipline to claim that because Tchaikovsky had this quote, like they took, they asked him once, like, what is your inspiration? Like, how do you, how do you compose? What is your work timing? And he's like, you know, my muses are always there with me. Every day when I sit at my piano at nine o'clock, they my muses are always there. And I don't have that kind of discipline. And that's probably also because I'm, I'm sometimes it's it's hard for me to figure out the schedule when you're doing lots of different projects at a time. And uh, I think I kind of lost myself in, <laughs> in this. But anyway, I'm the point of staying long is actually when I when when you really dig into something and, and, and when it starts unfolding and it's eleven o'clock, you're not just gonna go home and sleep, right? Yeah. So so that's that's something that that, that 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 happens sometimes. But overall I'm I'm lucky to have that space and I'm lucky to have those two other works because like conducting in theater in musical theater it's almost like going out like you know seeing your friends and stuff like that to do the show. Sometimes I even come back and work after the show. And the faculty in Niche, I only work there on Tuesdays. So Tuesdays, I travel to Niche and back. I prepare on Mondays. So, you know, every, every, all the other days are practically completely free for me to work on, on, on these other stuff that I'm doing. And some of them are classical and some of them are, are, I would say, pop related. It's not really pop what I'm doing, but I also have a band where I sing and the band that I lead and I'm supposed to finish this first material by the end of the year. So. It's literally like that. I mean, I work a little bit on classic and a little bit on pop, but that's I, I maybe I went too far. Sorry, Darko. I mean, I maybe I took some of your time. No, no, no. You can you go on if you want. Like you can, you can. Yeah, just finish what you wanted to say. I can easily jump. No, but I mean that, that's pretty much it. I mean, theater niche. I have my workspace whenever I can. I come here to work because you know I'm kind of lost in the fragments right now. It's, I don't know about the other fields, but. You know that feeling when you start a lot of things and then you have a lot of beginnings and a lot yeah. of those beginnings might develop into something else, but it just takes time to, <laughs> to finish that stuff. So that's what I'm kind of doing now. I'm actually digging through some old stuff and just because I want, I, I, it's, it's like when you have to do like a big cleaning of a very dirty house, like <laughs> that's how I feel about, about that way of working. I mean, just trying um, to figure out what maintenance is a big part of what we do like we can't be creatives all the time we also need to maintain and you know take care of the things that we have so yeah what about you Darko? i mean um uh, you know we are all uh 
freelance artists you know so it's kind of like also when when we transmit the idea of being a freelance artist that sounds almost ideal to someone who maybe doesn't have experience to 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 know what that really means you know like once upon a time maybe i don't know that it was also different to um uh, live under this let's say like definition of freelance artist really means but nowadays that has really changed a lot and i i still believe that i am one of those very lucky people who actually does what he wants to do like because i really love what i do but then at the same time there is also like um that other part that brings uh, a lot of other issues around being a freelance artist in 2017, which means like a lot of uh, uh, organization and promotion and doing a business and uh, also creating a network and also like being disciplined in so many ways, you know? So like my uh, every day is a day where they are like a, quite strict uh, structures, I would say, that I have uh, built myself, that uh, I know how to dive myself in and uh, understand uh, uh, how they are constructed. And within those constructions, I uh, create um, uh, the space where I can function well. In that sense, you know, like the space sometimes can be um, quite uh, claustrophobic, but also in, at the same time, it opens a lot of possibilities of what do I expect from myself of the material that I need to produce on an everyday basis? Because it is great to be freelance artist, but there is a lot of pressure as well on how much we need to produce in order to, above all, you know, support our lifestyles, but then also like fulfill expectations from, if we can call it a market in a way, you know, because we all somehow like deliver something that in the end is a product. So, you know, now what's interesting, I think, in this uh, constellation that we are talking right now is that we come from different uh, disciplines. Sometimes our disciplines also cross because I myself work a lot as well with the people who work with programming and musicians and so on. So uh, in that sense, we can also, I think, tackle different, uh, different aspects of our professions. But I think more or less expectations are the same, you know, so... There's something that can be like more institutional work or less or not, but um, there is something that needs to be produced and uh, that's what we all do on an everyday basis. So, uh, I, I, I don't know. I, what do you... I, I think there are a couple of things that I, am, I feel very um, like close to and also sometimes opposing to in, in what you both are saying. Um, like, I can say that, like, I probably don't like I make probably like a portion of my living out of my art and I kind of feel um, stressed when I try to make money out of my art only um, because like trying to support your living and creativity in in my case they don't go well with each other it just stresses me a lot um, so from time to time as a freelancer, I also take like programming jobs, like, like an engineer, not an artist at all. Um, or sometimes, you know, I do stuff for events, which are more like design related stuff. Um, but yeah. And also like about the, what you said, Alexander was like, when you go into your studio and you think to yourself, it's like, what am I supposed to do? I think that's like the main big question that we keep on asking ourselves because the answer is also changing every day like <laughs> um, you can have like ideals uh, that you put on yourself like five years ago and you probably have achieved more than half of them right now but now they don't seem that important you know now you can drift away to different directions like at least that's the kind of um, kind of where I am at my life right now like I have done stuff up until this point, and now, like I, since this is my first year abroad, I like I, I took I took a year off from myself, and I am so happy that I did that. Like taking a year off from yourself, from all that pressure that you are putting on yourself, is is very really relaxing, uh, and it also puts me into perspective that about the things that I want to do in the following years. Um, so yeah, like I I think uh, that. Um, 
supporting yourself by only by art or doing some other stuff in the meantime is um, is also kind of um, one of the challenges that we have to have. And and it's also sometimes like uh, I, I recently uh, opened my Instagram account. Um, I'm not a very much social media user, but as an artist in the 21st century, I think we all have to be proper social media users. And and whenever, it, it, for me, it also feels like I feel stupid when I'm writing posts. It's like I spend 15 minutes trying to find the proper hashtags and or, or the, <laughs> and it's like, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, what, what am I doing? You know, what am I spending time with? But at the yeah. same time, it is important, like, uh, like as, as I was telling you, like we can't be creative or insp inspired all the time. We also need to do maintenance work, like marketing or or doing PR works or you know any, anything other than our creative um, endeavors. Um, but I think it is really about language. About language. You know, it you is know, uh, 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 language. The way we express ourselves is continuously changing. You know, I remember as well when I started to use social media. Not, uh, you know, the, the first it was really about, about, you know, private life and how to connect with yeah. people as well, because, you know, like moving from place to place and keeping some kind of contact. But then at one point it really switched that, you know, it was a mix of both private and professional. And then, you know, like I've noticed as well that some people really don't expose anything from their private lives, but they use yeah. social media only for professional matters and if they know how to use it well you know with a certain let's say dignity in a way you know like <laughs> then it's really then it's really like uh, well presented and it stands for what they want to to show of themselves and and you know nowadays you know but it, it of course from year to year it goes to different levels so it yeah. you know it, it grows bigger and bigger and bigger and i think you know like doing hashtags like what you're saying or whatever you know it is really about how to learn to use new ways and new language of that is not only about promotion it yeah. is about expression we are creating with, with with our work you know like with with the messages that we want to transmit so that can be creative as well i really you know like I, I actually find it i'm not the best using that as well don't don't get me wrong but like uh uh, but I think that if it's used smartly, it can be like really gr great creative tool. It also has a great humor in it, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's one thing that I really like about it. Like we stopped taking things very seriously and we are realizing that because all these accounts are not usually at least, um, most of them are not brands anymore. They are real people. Um, so it puts this human element back to the to the dialogue. So yeah, we don't need. To, yeah, I, I like the humor in in those things as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, when, when I think about the fa Facebook, I think about the good things and the bad things. I mean, the bad things is that you know sometimes it can be very time consuming, and yeah. <laughs> it can just take you take an hour of your time when you need that hour, like for to do something else. But uh, I'm gonna come back to to what you said, Osman, about the supporting yourself through what you do and taking those side gigs i think at least in my case it's 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 the same thing just the field is different so i mean to to, to support myself while i was a freelancing i was i used to play guitars for uh, pop tracks like yeah. a whole bunch of pop singers here and stuff like that so music for for commercials uh, music for theater bunch of stuff like that so but but it's still somehow related even my job today I'm, as a teacher at, at the faculty in Ish, I, I teach vocal literature which was not my favorite thing at all actually I, I i'm running away from opera all of my life i just didn't like the opera and now all of a sudden i have to teach it like from the very beginning like the, the ninth century gregorian <laughs> chant up to you know postmodernism and it's 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 good i i i'm really feel lucky to 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 have that job because it I found out a lot of new names, a lot of new types of music that I didn't know before. So I, I, I'm pretty sure that even if you work as a programmer on a side project, that programming skill is still going to be, you know, it's still somewhere in your brain and you might need it for some of the stuff that you, that you do for yourself, yeah. I guess. So De definitely so I like what I love 
about the way I work is that like if I write a program for, for an engineering job, I can use the same thing for an art installation as well. So the, and, and also vice versa. Like if I write a code for yeah. an, an art installation, I can use a part of it for an engineering job as well. So like the more you work, the more things you have in your, in your bucket which are ready to be used. That's, yeah, that's kind of what I'm thankful about, the, the, uh, about my work, yeah. No, no, but that, that's a good thing because I think it's all related. It's all you and you, you yeah. are just, you know, you're making yourself better whether you work for yourself or for somebody else. But, you know, when I think about myself, the, the problem with me is that I always, <laughs> I think I look, look after, uh, you know, other people's projects more than my, than my own project. So that, that, yeah. that's one thing I have to change. But uh, as for social media, I have a friend. His name is Nemanja Radulovic. He's a uh, probably the most famous, uh, the most famous violin player in Serbia right now. He has a worldwide career. He has like four CDs for Deutsche Grammophon, which is one of the best classical music companies in the world. And anyway, he he's a really great friend and a wonderful human being. And he has two profiles, and I think that's a mm -hmm. thing. You have an official page. And you have like a private profile where you keep, uh, yeah. but but anyway, like the most important information about Facebook is a lot of people don't know that, and it's not related to art at all. But still, it's a public document, and a lot of people just don't understand that. And I, I never really understood like guys that you know, like archiving your life. You 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 take a picture with the beer in your hand and stuff like that, and somebody's tomorrow somebody. I mean, I'm not being too hardcore about it. I mean, you can you know hug your friends and stuff like that, but I, just just saying that people should be, I think, more aware that. That Facebook is a public record and which can be used against you, I guess. Yeah. But the thing about the the official page and a private profile, I think that's a that, that, that that's a good way to go. And I I also don't know how to present my stuff. I rarely share my videos, and if, even if I do, I somehow feel embarrassed. So I was actually thinking to hire somebody who's going to do that for me. Like, you know, you you should just write write nice stuff about me, and you know, <laughs> share my stuff from time to time. I mean, not from time to time. I spoke to Nemanja about sharing because like we all have to promote our product and share it and so on and i i was totally not into that but he was and he told me that you know there are specific almost like a timeline where when is the good time to to, to post something because like yeah, yeah, yeah. this many people is on facebook at that, at that so it's it, it's definitely something that that we should know we should know how to use that stuff because it's it's, it's just the time that we live in and and you know that kind of promotion was was really expensive before it it it, it happened yeah. and we should definitely learn how to take advantage of it yeah well. i like recently i was reading about this um new wave of arts that's like the art for instagram mm -hmm. and that was the first time that i felt like dude i'm i'm getting old you know, this is something that I can't keep up with and I don't want to keep up with. Um, like, there is, like, this new way of, let's say, pop art, which is mostly just creating a backdrop for people to take nice Instagram pictures at. And, you know, it's very colorful, it's very vibrant, it's, or they have mirrors or different colored lights, and there's no context. They, it doesn't tell anything, you know. Mm. It's just the decor. Um, but it is what the market demands. You know, it's what's becoming more and more popular. And, and I'm, I was like, really, okay, this is kind of too much for me. I, I, you know, I, I'm still very spect uh, skeptical about it, but yeah. Well, well yeah, that, that's your feeling. I mean, if we talk about music, it's, you know, modern composition can be a lot of things. And I, I don't see myself really as a modern composer. I mean, because I don't know how did you and uh, Osman and Darko, how familiar are you with like what are contemporary composers doing today? But you know, it like, can like, be like, like who, like um, Ryuichi well, Sakamoto, Philip Glass, or are you? Oh well, yeah, or, do, 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 do those names as well. But I mean, yeah, Philip Glass is a contemporary. What, what was the first name you said? Um, Ryuichi Sakamoto. I don't know about that guy. Sakamoto, I, I know the last name, but Richard Sakamoto. Uh, but ne no, but ne I, mind. I mean, that <laughs> I'll check him out. I'm Steve Reich. I mean, I you know I can yeah. I can tell yeah, the names, yeah, yeah. but anyway, yeah. contemporary composition. Well, you know, it can be 
I also sometimes feel that I'm I'm too old school, even 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 years ago. I mean, I tried to 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 to, to study that music. I mean, it, in music, like you have to, at least from my perspective, I mean, I, I have to like it to be able to understand it in a way. I there there has to be something about that music f for me to connect with. And a lot of modern music that just doesn't have that 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 something. It is experimental. It is interesting sonorically, but as as you say, for me there is no context. There is no melody. There is no like my impression yeah. after that music is is usually, you know, some scared phase and oh, it's interesting and I didn't understand a thing and you know, and I I just you know I I I, I can't compose like that. So it's it's I I, I get that you know each 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 of us is 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 an individual and each of us is original and but you know when you we were talking about the times that we live in and those other you said pop art and like this contemporary composition i'm just thinking about composition in general because like classical music in 50 years i don't know what our pianists going to do in 50 years yeah. they're going to they're going to record one more complete edition of chopin which is recorded like 500 times before i mean you know the classical music because it, it it lost communication with the audience it's turning into some museum art it doesn't really you know yeah. who listens to classical music and i think it's a world problem in a way and you know that of course there are some composers there that that, that 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 write nice music and still can actually and actually have their audience like that's the thing have their audience have have some people that actually are going to go and buy a cd and play it at home because they want to hear it that's mm -hmm. i think that's a pretty important thing <laughs> but that is sorry, exactly that. i'm sorry like i i actually have to have to um jump in on what you're talking about i think that that is exactly what is the problematic it is not the problematic about the con like art is not there to please art is there to <laughs> to to you know to to push boundaries and if there is a if there is a status of art even with the composition of modern music that is not understandable enough or that requires brand new audience or brand new settings that is actually what the problematic is and that is that the institutions need to be reorganized and retaught you know as art has to be in itself you know so uh, what how pianists are going to work in 50 years that requires a new uh, new ways of thinking and that doesn't happen only with classical music that or modern music that happens with all artistic fields where people don't want to exhibit art anymore only in the museums or galleries people don't want to dance on a stage pianists don't want to play at a big piano in front of 50 bourgeois rich ladies People want to go on the street and, like, you know, bring yeah. new contexts that could be, you know, bringing a new ways of thinking that could be also, like, you know, superficial pop art as well, you know, like one picture yeah. drop on Instagram. But that is like a new language that, you know, art was always having as a boundary pusher, you know? So I think, yeah. you know, when we talk about, when we talk about, you know, um, classifying things and i think that we have to reflect upon what do we look at them from you know like if i if i if i if i make an, an analysis of what is the current state of uh, modern composition then what is my starting point to, as a, as the point of view of critique you know because if it really comes only about the audience and about uh, no, uh, no, 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 absolutely not. I, I definitely you know? didn't think that we should be st sticking Chopin and like just having something that's gonna like cuddle your ears while you're listening to it. Definitely not yeah. that. But I think yeah. that boundary pushing. I mean, in seventies, I think they reached an end for for a lot of kinds of experiments. Like they had some composition when the guy was literally laying on the piano. There was a heater turned to him, and you know his. He's so turned, was, yeah. uh, he's turned upside down. Like his drops are falling. I, I, I don't see that as, as, as pushing boundaries. I see that as you know. I don't want to swear in a live, you know, conference. But that's just not. No, but, like I, yesterday, I, 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 I cannot understand what boundaries does it push in which way, yeah. in which direction. What, what, what's the element? What, what, what are you trying to tell me? It, it like, doesn't have to it's, be. It's not, it's not about the. Mm -hmm. No. 
like that piece you are talking about doesn't have to be a musical piece. It can be a performance art that involves a piano in the. the yeah, in the but it was used as a piano piece. That, 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 that was officially like the the work for. It was an exam. I think it was okay. Maybe it was even in Belgrade. So it was you know if if you wanna you have an exam in composition and you go out and do this. Okay, you push you push the boundaries. I never saw anybody lay on a piano with the heater on him like for two hours and and stuff. But is, is that really the way those boundaries should go? I, I I absolutely agree with you, Darko, on 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 this boundary thing. But it's it's how you do it, and it's you you know uh, there is a lot of art that says it's push boundaries, but I'm not sure if that's the really right direction. I, I I'm not trying to say. But I, I don't like these globalistic definitions. There are a lot of great composers that do great music, but in general, there is there is also art that thinks that push boundaries, you, but that doesn't. And, and everyone has their own taste. Like you might not yes, like it, yes, someone exactly. else might like it. You know. And yeah, like yeah, yeah. yesterday, I was thinking about what it means to be a 21st century artist, and I don't think I'm exactly a 21st century artist. Like when I think of an example, like the you know those people in YouTube that they they form a band, but they are all in different countries. So they are sending each other's um, their recordings. Like uh -huh, you yeah, drum, you send me that track, then I play the guitar on top of it. I send it to Darko, and he sings on top of it, and then we come up with a song. Um, so I think one of the things that means that makes that means that uh, of of the twenty first century artist means is also re considering and reinventing different uh, methods of work exactly. uh, because also like at the same time politically the world is getting more and more fucked up and mm -hmm. I'm, I had a lot of issues with traveling and visas and I'm sure you also had the, had similar experiences um, so these kind of technologies also like they first give us another uh, field of distribution of our art which is not inst institutionalized so you can also share your art anywhere without any curator telling you that you are eligible or good enough or not. And the second thing is like we can now have global um, collaborations in order to overcome bound overcome boundaries, which is still hard. Um, and like personally, in my own experience, I had a couple of um, trials for it, and currently I only have one that's still working. Um, we have this. Um, visual trio called NOS and mm -hmm. like yesterday they performed at Krakow and today I'm performing at San Francisco and we are both yeah. using the same software that we created all ourselves so like three three guys we, we put a lot of effort in this and now we are touring in different places uh, and this wouldn't probably be possible before um, no. so I, I think this is more like what it the, the the change of the meaning of what a 21st century artist is in general yeah i mean it is it also comes to our own understanding of what artistic formats really are you know it's like for me you know like and and my cultural background you know it can be that i just saw for example like a um, few days ago on a bookshelf in in my library in uh, back home in belgrade I just came back from there three days ago. There's this beautiful book of Alex Ross, who is, um, who is a theoretician of uh, music, musicologist. Mm -hmm. And he wrote an uh, extended uh, uh, overview of, let's say, like um, modern music. And the title of the book is And the Rest is Noise. So, you know, it's like I, I, it made me really think about that so much. And uh, and uh, and you know, and I think in that sense, you know, it can be also applied to 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 our artistic practices. What is it that we want to reflect with our work? You know, it's yeah. like what is it that yeah. we want to trigger? What is it? You know, like my politicality. I mean, every artwork is political work. You know, like my work is probably different than yours or yours. You know, it, but it yeah. also depends on so many things that you know are, let's say, like personal luggage behind that you know so in that sense you know like it is also quite interesting i think also within this conversation how we look at also like uh, classifying certain things you know how we yeah. you know understand what the formats really are um 
Because so we need to have something that's stable for us to refer to. But yeah. at the same time, art itself is, or everything in the, in the world is like constantly changing. So when you're referring to that thing, that thing is no longer the way it used to be. So it confuses us. And that's, yeah. I think, one of the challenges of like, you know. Of yeah, I mean, I, I find that the biggest danger actually in, in art that it is non-reflective enough. You know, that's what I actually find problematic, you know, because as you have said yourself, you know, like we live in such a turbulent Know, where things are continuously changing so fast and my biggest fear is and when it happens that i go to see performance or when i go see the exhibition or whatever you know like and then i come out and i don't feel anything so i'm not either provoked because i hated it uh -huh. or i loved it or you know like i had some kind of like entry point where i could think about it but i leave and i don't think and i don't feel so there is nothing yeah. That's when I see really art being super problematic. But I do have to see, say that I see that mostly as a super institutional art, arts, you know, when there is like, a, like institutions producing and supporting artistic practices. What was the case, for example, with this year's Venice Biennale? There mm -hmm. was like plenty of artists and plenty of galleries and, and you know, all over the city but with nothing except really huge investment, financial investment, and result really not reflective that much, no. you know? So that's where I really see danger about art, art. And that's what I was saying before about uh, boundary pushing, in a sense that it has to provoke. Art is there to provoke, you know? And if we don't fulfill that, uh, as three artists yeah. talking to each other, then we are failing, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So no, no, but that's, that's what uh, that's what I thought as well. I mean, and the, to mm. be reflective is a, is actually a good word for that. Mm. It can also be used in in music. Oh, no good. I mean, yeah. you, I want to say a lot of things I can't can't remember now. But you, you go, Osman. I'll remember. Okay. <laughs> On the other hand, like all these ways of new ways of distribution can also sometimes be surprising. Like we we also have. Like, even though rarely, probably, we also have, like, good surprises that's happening to us. Like, someone that you have never thought about reaching can reach out to you. And mm. then it becomes another, uh, another um, challenge that, um, you know, you have your own pace. You have your own speed on your thinking, on your living, on your producing. But sometimes a random opportunity happens just because internet. And... Then you have to be ready for it, and like, um, especially I think when you are um, going to new uh, places or meeting new people, you usually have it, and it also makes you because, like, on one hand, when you are working on your art pieces, you are kind of sucked into this tunnel vision, which is very short sighted. Um, but at the same time, you also need to have a longer or maybe like a long and longer uh, terms of visions because you never know like in this agent time any even a major institution or any random person that uh, that an artist that you you were dreaming about collaborating with can reach out to you but then it becomes a question of are you ready for that or not and that's like one of the uh challenges that I'm seeing in, in some of my friends, because like um, we are doing stuff and the more stuff you do, the, the better you get or the more well-known you get. Um, but it is also easy to, um, how can I put it? Um, anyway, but you know what I mean. Like, so in general, like uh, I also see that as a, like we have these steps uh, about how to proceed, how to go further, but sometimes we need to skip like ten of them and jump further because usually, like even though as artists we tend to think fast and keep up with the date, um, even then we are sometimes getting out of date. And mm -hmm. when an opportunity comes, you know, like if someone tells you like you don't have any boundaries, money is not an issue, you can do your own thing in wherever you like, then what do you do? It's like winning a lottery, you know? Yeah. 
And I don't think I'm ready to win a lottery right now. I don't know what to do with that money. You know, that's also like one thing that I'm recently realizing. <laughs> yeah, but I remember when I when I went to USC for my master's in composition, and anyway, they they had this orchestra, and we were all supposed to write a piece for orchestration. So, in Belgrade, when you're graduating, like I. I finished under the old system before Bologna, so it was like five years, mm -hmm. and in the fifth year, you, you get to compose for the orchestra. We, the first thing we thought about is like, what, what are the instruments that are missing? Like, what instruments we don't have, so we don't write for them? And you finally get, get to LA, and you have all the instruments you can possibly imagine. Okay, now I have everything. What to do with that? So that's yeah. like a situation related to that. And about uh, what you, Darko, were, were saying, that art is there to provoke. Provoke is a good thing, because art... I, I spoke to my mother about it recently, and she said something like art should be like a critique to today's to critique to the society or, or something like that i said yes it could be a critique but it doesn't have to be a critique i yeah. mean it can be it can be a view in a different direction that's what i like to do sometimes as well because like if if the art is supposed to tell you the same thing that every everything else is telling you you know maybe maybe the other way is good like you know just offer something different than than, than what's on this i'm not sure if i'm making if yes I'm you are but, good, but i i think i think you are i think it goes in the same direction you know like if you you create a, let's say like um a, a possibility if you create heterotopia in the end you know like it's non-existing as well you know it's like you can you are you are giving a, a solution as a critique you know because you are criticizing then what's already existing so i think you know like you are saying this is a i don't want a i want to create b let's move in the direction of b and at the same time you know like, I, I i i think you know i mean i mean i agree with your mother alexander no me, I, I no, really no, no. Me, me, me too i'm not saying yeah, it's yeah. not i'm just saying it's not the yeah, only yeah, way absolutely. i'm just saying yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I think I think it, uh, um, you know, um, one of the things that I'm always saying, you know, l luckily most of, of, of my friends are uh, in working in artistic or creative field. So, but with those that uh, I get in touch that I'm on, you know, like that are also friends or family that I talk on, you know, frequently, I also say sometimes that the um, role of artists, you know, like we, we if I think about, how most of artists that I know and collaborate with, collaborate with think, I think that this world in so many ways would be much, much better place because I think that artists in general, and this is not a generalization, I think that this is really experience, think progressively in so many ways. You know, I think that artists are one of those groups of people that I can loudly declare don't know boundaries in so many ways when it comes to politics or race or uh, uh, genders or whatever you know it's like i'm saying most i don't know if i cannot say all but most at least people that i'm working with so in that sense you know like uh, i think because we are so aware of problematics of the systems that we are working with with and in you know i think that we are uh, capable of criticizing you know and uh, that's what we do on an everyday basis so we, yeah. we got our first question, by the way. Let me read it out loud. Um, okay. So the, the question is, now when, we, now when speaking about what is artist and how his life looks, lo looks like now, um, do you believe that uh, life of an artist today is more like back then in Renaissance? An artist is a multidisciplinary person, philosopher, creator, then artist. What do you guys think? Um... Well, you know, like uh, this, this question for me has two questions, actually, you know, like more like back then in Renaissance, an artist, you know, yes, it is the same because artists back then were suffering as we do today in so many ways. Uh, but in order to, you know, function, uh, we need to be uh, multi trans uh, cross disciplinary uh, or non disciplinary, you can call it however we want. And if this contains philosopher, creator, and then artist, I mean, yes. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yes, of course. I mean, yeah, can, can we, I, I don't know if we can split. 
you know, like thinking from doing, you know, like you, you know, that's so. I think around like probably 80s or 90s, especially with the Industrial Revolution, we had these like um, separation of different disciplines um, and being an expert in only one field. Um, but mm. now it's like coming back together. Like there used to be a lot of, you know, people were really experts in like one yeah. small portion of, of a machine. Uh, mm -hmm. Now with the current tools and current way of thinking, we can like now design the whole machine rather than being an expert on one. Um, so cool. I think there is like in that sense, there is a way it's it is becoming again like more similar to Renaissance. Like the like we are becoming polymaths. Like we uh, even like many of the artists now have to learn some programming which requires math or or engineers have to know how to like the basics of color theory because they need to design websites you know like all these um disciplines are merging together and creating new disciplines like um i did my masters on mechatronics which probably didn't existed like 10 years ago like it's the combination of mechanics and electronics and now we need another uh, classification another title for that specific thing which will become more and more um, chaotic um, in the near future. That's also kind of why I like to call myself a creative technologist because it's like mm. a very broad term, you know, it's very vague. Mm. You are using technology in, in a creative way and it doesn't mean anything uh, <laughs> because otherwise it would be too hard to put names on each work you do. Uh, but that's also not something that I'm very interested in. Like I like, doing experimentations and i like building stuff but for me i i don't um i don't need uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that i i like to classify them or like say that okay this thing that i did is art and this is not you know it's not mm -hmm. my job you know i just do stuff and sometimes it's art sometimes it's not and i'm completely fine with both ways um mm. So what do you guys think about this like second renaissance that we are having right now? No, 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 yeah, yeah, I would agree with you on that. I mean, it's just, it's just important to do stuff and like it's less important how you classify it. But in terms of how many skills you have to own, I think that in general, like artists today, if they want to live from their art, that I think they absolutely have to, if, if, especially if they're aiming to be on some, on some good level of, of the art that they do, they, they they gotta have like a lot of different skills. I mean, as a musician, for example, just this conducting part, like the conducting is like 10% of conductor's job. Like I, when I did my own concerts, it means to organize this whole thing up. And yeah. a lot of those things are not even music related. Like you have to ring like 50 people, you know, do, do a lot of administrational stuff. That's absolutely not music related. Like then recording songs for somebody it's one thing to orchestrate a movie score is a different thing to sing to you know it's just this whole bunch of these skills that are all put together and mm -hmm. sometimes it's i mean i'm i feel lucky and happy in a way with all the skills that i've gotten through time but then there's another problem as you as you said before like a little bit before even today, I mean, there are some people that actually like to focus on this one thing, and sometimes that can be good. Like you're doing just that, and you master that, and sometimes it really works out if you're really good at it. But if I look at my case, sometimes I'm I'm actually struggle with my own identity because I love both yeah. things, and it's like these two things that you have to parallelly push together. Like one is the classical career where I would like to go, you know, travel the world and conduct my stuff as a conductor not to say a word and the other one is like the, the 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 thing with my band where i play the guitar and sing and like that's my that that's how i got into music so it's even though this is like more serious stuff like classical composer maestro and all yeah. that stuff like that this is like rock and roll but you know when i when i write music for both things it's 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 i, I learned to connect things that's a good thing like connecting like the the the, the process of creating classical music to rock and roll but still the day has only 24 hours so yes that's that's good like th this renaissance kind of thing where you have a lot of skills and you, th that just means that you were more likely to support yourself for your art but then again it can also be a trap in a way because 
uh, no matter how skills you have, you still have to find a way how to mix them all together and make yourself out of it. And just to put yourself really on the right path. I'm not sure if I'm making sense with this, but different projects are okay. But I mean, I, I try to imagine like what would it actually it's a constant search i believe maybe yeah. I, I moved on to the other subject completely through that renaissance thing but but i think I, th I think it's useful i don't think that all the others are like that but all the ones who are the ones who have various set of skills are absolutely the the, the, the lucky ones and and if they know how to use it well it's it's great and, and i think it's also because of the collaborations that we do like whenever i'm collaborating with someone else it's probably that person is coming from a completely different background. Um, so each collaboration is also like um, coming up with a new language between those two different people and two disciplines. And at the end of that process, at the end of that collaboration, you definitely er, like learn a lot and you probably teach a lot too. Um, and I kind of, like when I first started doing this stuff, I kind of saw it like, like being a parasite um because like at this day and time i am able to collaborate with pretty much anyone like i, I collaborated with architects i collaborated with uh, visual artists musicians dancers whatever because in one way or another you can put a technology or a sensor or some kind of software somewhere and it's um and it also made me learn a lot because in my case, I'm coming from an engineering background. I'm not, I didn't, uh, I don't have an art diploma. And working with all these different types of artists definitely taught me a lot about art and ways of thinking in very different fields. No, no, but that's it. I mean, but when you're working with artists, you're already on the field, even though you don't have a diploma. Like, who cares about yeah. diploma? But... Yeah, exactly. Great. So we have another question, which is, what is most boring, annoying, yet most essential thing artists today needs to do? <laughs> uh, um, most of the meetings and dealing with your own social media. Yeah, administration. Mm. And yeah, that's yeah, like it, meetings and social media, I guess. Like to yeah, yeah. everything that is not related to the actual art that you're doing, I think, even though that has to be like a really good skill. Like Darko, I I wish I could be like you <laughs> in that way. I mean mm -hmm, the, to, to, mm -hmm. to, to really structure your time and to mm -hmm. and to, to keep on that that thing. I actually I never did it because it, in, in my mind it looks kind of silly because like you know you get home and then you practice piano one hour and then you practice guitar two hours then you orchestrate this thing for one hour that it literally it would look like that but i never actually try to do it I'm, i i might but but yeah, I yeah. Think that the most worrying thing is, is is administration and just you know to pr yeah. self-promoting especially if you're not that self-promotion kind of guy with a huge ego that's going to go around and and say that he's the best so that, no, that can yeah. That's it. I would say uh, uh, what is the most boring, annoying thing is uh, uh, working on papers, like uh, getting working permits, visas. That's like takes a lot of my time, you know. And uh, I moved away 19 years ago from my homeland, and I'm still sorting out my papers. Um, so that is quite time consuming. Then second one would be. And third one would be that I need to vacuum and uh, wipe the dust sometimes in my apartment. <laughs> so that's yeah. the last one. And there is one more question. Can art be manipulation? Could be. Uh, it, it is kind of a vague question. I think we should interpret it ourselves. Like what yeah. kind of a manipulation? Hmm. Um, in a way, y yes, um, like because in most of the cases when an audience sees an artwork, it is usually something they not only haven't seen before, but also they wouldn't have imagined before. Mm -hmm. um, so you are showing a new perspective in one way or another. And hopefully that perspective, if that's like impactful enough, that's probably changing that person, thus like manipulating that person 
in the way that they think or in the way that they can imagine from now on. Mm. Well, when I think of manipulation, it, it, it comes to me in a, in a bad context, like a, a, as default, it's in some kind of a bad context. So I, I couldn't say that I can manipulate. It can change the way you think about something. But is that manip if, if, manipulation? Yeah. Is it bad? How bad can it get? Like you, you. I just don't know if you can like see a movie or hear an opera um, or or or. Every art is it also can like definitely a change. I'm sorry. Also, like art is one of the main tools for propaganda, so it is definitely a manipulative tool. Well, yeah, yeah. When you well, yeah, I just remember the campaign of our president. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, they, they also had songs, and someone has composed exactly, those songs. Exactly, exactly. Right. Well, there were actually no songs, but I mean, it's it's it's, it's like short films, like they're and they're supposed to be cute, and uh, it's weird kind of stuff. But it is, you know, if you didn't know who that guy was, and if you just saw that, you would think it's a, like a, some small commercial, some small movie that had an art director that had a screenplay, blah blah blah. So, so yeah, I guess I guess it can. But yeah. but but I'm I'm thinking about the the you know, I wanted to say the real art, but something that's not a commercial that has the elements of art in it but i don't know i'm just not sure if the, if the manipulation is the right word i think it can be but i think it, it you know the art should uh, make people question themselves so like to, to to like tickle them somewhere where they never haven't been tickled before that in that way in in positive way May, maybe yeah. in a negative as well but not not in a manipulative i i, I don't know it's a it's an interesting word game word play <laughs> What about you, Dark? What do you think? Yes, I think art can be manipulative. Um, I know uh, through my practice um, how to use certain tools in order to manipulate if I want to. So, um, but also, like if I don't reflect on what I do, um, for sure, for sure, it can be manipulative in so many ways. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, but uh, I have this one composition. It's called "Idividi Dedu." Go see your grandfather. And uh, when it got out, uh, a, a, a lady friend told me that she has a Chinese friend, and that uh, she told her about my composition. And she she called her mother to China after like five years. They haven't heard each other just to just to hear her voice or something like that. So I wouldn't call it the manipula manipulation. It was more like a stimulation. But I'm just actually trying okay. to figure out: is 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 manipulation a bad context always like to, when you manipulate somebody can, can can it be can manipulation be in a like for that's like putting manipulation in only a bad context is more like a cultural thing it doesn't translate like that in every culture yeah yeah so it doesn't yeah, uh... <laughs> yeah that was more like manipulation is also <laughs> a technical term so yeah it doesn't need it doesn't necessarily need to be a negative thing mm. i think yeah yeah, maybe I just you know, maybe I just heard the word only in bad context. So no, no, it it, it is commonly used in bad context, but you know, I think like as artists, we should use words in different <laughs> contexts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, good. I've learned something today too as well. Like manipulation <laughs> is not necessarily a bad word. Yeah. Do we have any more questions? Uh, no. No, no, no. I'm just thinking now about possibilities, how to, how to um, manipulate attention of really problematic groups, you know, and how that would be amazing concept, you know, like to, to have a room, you know, like full of, you know, like, let's say, like, for example, politicians that we, you know, really cannot stand and then we find a way how to manipulate their attention, you know, that would be quite brilliant project to do, you know. So even if it's highly abusive, why not, you know? Yeah. It's like um yeah. if you need music for that, um, let me know. <laughs> we should talk. <laughs> but, it would be so cool if we if we do something together. I'm I i do not know if that's possible, but there is a there is a new question now. What is the difference between um uh -huh. What is the difference between commercial creation and artist artistic one for you? Well, it should all be good, and if you sell it, even better. But I, I, when you have a commission, uh, of, of, of a certain commission that you have to do, at, at least I, I always try to 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 do it on the 
you know, highest artistic level. And I don't know. I don't know, actually. Because commercial, uh, when you do something commercial that, I mean, we all know what is commercial now, like what is commercial music, what is commercial, yeah. pretty much all the other art forms. And, and usually it, if it's commercial, it definitely doesn't mean it, it, it it's good. And, and it doesn't mean it has this artistic value. So I try always to, when I work on something to, you know, not, not to get to the, to the other side, too much even if the project is like that even if i chosen to do a project because uh, because the 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 check, the check is very good or something i simply always try to do it my best and 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 i think that all the other artists should do that just if if something is commercial that they shouldn't give it less attention or oh no of course like if no. if the and, amount and... of effort you pay in in an artwork uh, is different from the commercial works then it's something about your ethics probably um, yes, yes, yes. and at yeah. the same time of course like we like you know there is no rules about these like sometimes you are in a certain situation where you have to do something that you don't like or whatever um, but I think um, oh okay so the question is related to the amount of compromises that we do that's what I have read recently. Um, so, okay. Um, the way at least it worked for me usually is like, if the project keeps changing after I said, okay, then that's a big red flag for me. And it usually happens and I still don't know how to prevent it. Like I say, okay, to a project and the more we work on it, the project changes in a direction that I, didn't want to go and the client is unhappy with the end product and I'm unhappy with the end product um, uh, but I think right now I'm more it's easier for me to uh, walk away uh, I used to be more um, careful about keep doing all the projects and keeping all my clients now I'm like you know, there will always be projects. There will second. always. Be... I just said I will be back in a sec. Sure. Okay. So, like, there will always be projects, and there will always be work. Um, so, I'm not as careful about many projects as I used to be. Not the way that I do them, but the way that I accept them. them or yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that, that, that's actually. I think that that also comes over time. You simply learn. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were talking about how I guess uh, when when a certain age comes or a certain phase in your you know life yeah. comes when when you simply choose your projects more carefully, like you don't have to pick, you don't have to work every project that comes your way. You no, no. no. Just... I, I, there is also another thing in my case. Like I somehow probably the way that I have been raised uh, that I was always careful about the things that I said. And if I said something, I always had the pressure on myself that I have to do it. Um, but the world doesn't work like that. And it's, you know, it's just, you are just making your life harder. Um, so I think in, in general sense, also about work or about anything, I'm like, yeah, I said it like that, but you know, life happens, man. Yeah. Like, you know. And I, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, uh, I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> I am, um, um, I don't know, like, I cannot, I don't think that I can reflect upon this question in the most constructive way, because I don't work on commercial creations, to be perfectly honest. I would really like to give, a, give an answer to this, but I actually, I don't do commercial works, you know, like, maybe that's why I'm, you know, like, I don't know, I'm... Uh, it's not that this makes you know like my position uh, really great that I'm in a position to choose and decide exactly what I want because I I do make compromises on everyday basis, yeah. you know like and I do collaborate with many you know like uh, different artists and also sometimes with the um, institutions and so on but I don't do commercial work myself so you know it is more about you know like compromises in a sense how to collaborate with 
others rather than what is the actual product and it, if it has you know like commercial or non-commercial value you know so if it comes to products that i'm you know doing by myself or with others they are non-commercial no well I, 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 uh, and well, then I'm sorry. there is a new you, question there is a new question is it possible to have a full-time job outside of arts and be a great artist at the same time yeah, I think so. I I personally I know think you know because I live in Germany uh, and uh, and I think that that is uh, quite difficult. I think that if uh, there is a, especially in artistic context, and I can really reflect, and I'm really uh, putting myself more like I would say like in in let's say like Western European context or German context. I think that uh, being uh, having a part time job can still allow you to to have um, enough time or some time for your artistic practice. And full time job would mean only that if you have certain percentage allocated for research pur purposes, then yeah. it would be doable. If not, then I think it's extremely hard. Almost impossible. Yeah, I think it's also hard, but uh, it, it also depends on the person. It depends on whether the person has a family, a kid, uh, all of set of different circumstances. But even more difficult than I think. Yeah, yeah, right? absolutely. Uh, but but it just you know it, it really depends on the person. If if yeah, mm. I, I'm sure there are a lot of you know weird cases where you know people were working full time job while getting an artist, and then they exploded and became what they are today. I don't know. Uh, I don't know the names, but but it's mm. definitely. Diff I mean, even if you're doing only art, it's difficult. So especially if you have a full time job doing something completely different. Mm. So it's doable, but mm -hmm. but hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think, Osman? Okay. Um, I um, I I I don't know. Like in, I have never been full. I I didn't have a full time job at all. Um, and recently, I'm in fact uh, considering if I should get a full time job or not. But for me, one of the main things about getting a full time job is like about the time allocations or about the resources that I can get. Um, like, because also for this, um, like for my experimentations, I need machines. And but I also need machines for my work. So from big to small, like it can be a special camera or it can be a 3D printer or whatever. Um, so if I have access to them, then um, then I'm fine with it. Because like, as I said, I usually like building stuff and they all at the end will support each other. Like the stuff mm -hmm. that I can do for, for a full-time job can turn into uh, an art piece in one way or another. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we, uh, <laughs> we have uh, received. Uh, we should maybe stop here. Maybe this would be a good uh, um, <laughs> stopping point. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they said. Imagine that you have three minutes to make a common project together. What will it be? Well, that's, something that something that's not that, easy that to answer immediately, but. Yeah, well, like if we were improvising, I'm sure we would have like we all have stuff that's like ready, and we can just put them in. But like in art piece, I think would require more time to develop more than three minutes. Uh, what, 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 we have three minutes to to think of of what would it be, or the product should last three minutes. No, no, no. We have three minutes to think about what would it be. Well, I would go for something like you know opera or musical, like where you have music, where you have people do, do, that perform something, okay. and the light. I mean, that's I can, the, that's the mixture of performance, music, and light. So it, I can it, do the lights, and I can do the visuals for your opera. Um, I can do I can do opera, and I can do light and visuals. Okay, I'll I'll just do the music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. Perfect. Oh, that's really, really cool. Yeah. Okay, guys, it was a. Uh, I I really enjoyed this conversation, and I really enjoyed meeting you too. And I I, I hope that you know we're gonna hear each other, you yeah. know, after this conversation is over at you know some point. 
soon, I hope. I'm, I'm hoping to be around Belgrade in, in April. Um, I'll let you guys know. I, I oh, definitely please want, to do. Meet, want to meet you in person too. Um, so yeah. That is for Resonate Festival, I guess, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, then uh, it was pleasure on my side as well and have a nice evening. And we see each other soon, hopefully. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Good Bye luck guys. with your work. Good luck. Ciao. Bye-bye.